Hi, everyone. Welcome. Happy Taco Tuesday, Tequila Tuesday, whatever kind of Tuesday you want to have. Hello, hello, beautiful people. If you don't already know, you are here for a presentation on Cuba with Talek, and I'll do a short intro in a minute. But first, I'd love for everyone to drop in the chat box where you're calling from, if you've been to Cuba, and what number event this is for TNN. If you're new, welcome. If this is your 79th event, I also want to know that. So drop it in the chat box, and we'll give a minute for everyone to uh, figure out Zoom and just file into this lovely room of ours. Excited to have you all here. 79th event. <laughs> I love it. Or did anyone have any Cuba plans that got canceled? I know a few people that that's happened to, like the Rona just totally disbanded their Cuba plans, unfortunately. <laughs> so if you don't already know, my name is Leah. We're gonna give Miss Erica a little break today um, since she just got married over the weekend. Sorry, special shout out. <laughs> So my name is Leah, LA in Flight and all your social media. I am an event producer. I am the LA chapter leader and I created and host a podcast. It's called Ticket to Anywhere Podcast. So we're happy to have you all here. And I just want to go through a few housekeeping announcements before I can introduce Talek. So let me pull this up. Share screen. All right, everyone. So as I said, if you have already been to a Nomadic Network event, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. We are a global travel meetup um, that has gone global. We used to be in person in over 22 cities all around the world. And um, you know, we're a network that inspires and encourages each other to travel for cheaper, longer, and better. And um, now that the Rona has hit, we have gone to virtual events. But this is also cool because one, we haven't slacked on content. Two, we, now you can attend from anywhere in the world, whether it's on like a hammock in Thailand or from your couch in California, which I am doing currently. So we are excited to, to have you at this virtual event. And a few things to keep in mind. Um, you can turn your camera on. We love to see your beautiful faces, but you can turn it off if you're like cooking dinner also. It's okay. You will be muted for the entirety of the presentation. Uh, we'll have a Q&A afterwards. And so drop all of your questions in that chat box. Use that chat to connect, tell your stories, pop in advice if you've been to Cuba, all that good stuff. And if you can, please start your, your questions with question and I'll pick them up at the end when Talik and I do a Q&A. So replays for all of our events are available at, to Patreon members, and you can see the link there to find out how to get signed up. We're here to learn. We're here to encourage each other. We're here to, um, you know, fulfill your wanderlust since we aren't able to travel super far or internationally right now. And our speakers are doing this out of the kindness of their heart, their passion, their endless knowledge. So for that, we are very grateful. And so excited. I am going to do a little intro for Talek. Talek Nantes, thank you and welcome. Um, she thank is Cuban-American. I'm going <laughs> to She's um Talek is the founder of the travel blog, travelswithtalek.com. So after a successful career in international business, Talek shifted gears, created the travel blog to help others craft their own travel experiences. And Talek's personal professional background has led her to travel to over 110 countries. And she now splits her time with her husband. No, with her husband, she splits her time between New York and Miami. And her most recent book is Don't Just Travel to Cuba, Experience Cuba, the ultimate Cuba travel guide. But this is why you're all here in this presentation. She's going to give us the inside scoop on visiting beautiful Cuba. So Talek, you may go ahead and have the floor. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen. And uh, can everybody hear me? Okay. 
Great. All right. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for this opportunity. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here to talk about a subject that is very near to me uh, because I'm Cuban and my family comes from there. And it is a place that is frequently misunderstood. So one of my objectives is to clear up some of these misunderstandings and to let people know what a beautiful and what an inviting place it is. And we've got tons of stuff to cover today. So I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, first of all, how do you immerse yourself in the culture? Hint, it's as easy as pastelitos. Pastelitos are easy as pie, easy as pastelitos. That is a Cuban pastry. It's a delicious flaky pastry, just brimming with guava. And it's extremely common in Cuba. Now, just a, a little bit about me, although Leah covered a lot. Um, I was in international business for the bulk of my career. And in that capacity, I visited uh, many countries, uh, up to 110. And one thing that I can tell you is that no matter how far you travel or how often you travel, if it's in your heart, you really never get tired of it. So now I anticipate traveling even more and I hope to uh, do a lot more than this 110 countries. Uh, I'm Cuban American, uh, my family comes from Cuba and um, I was actually made in Havana. My mother came to the United States when she was very pregnant with me. So I like to say I was made in Havana, born in the USA. And this is my most recent book on Cuba. And to the right, you'll see all of the information, all of my uh, social media handles. And I also have a Facebook group, which is for uh, over women that are over 50 that love travel. So if you meet that demographic or you know someone who does, by all means, come and join us. We have a lot of fun. Um, we have happy hours. We do a lot of interesting things and, and it's all travel related. Now, what makes Cuba so special? When you think of Cuba, you think of, or many people do, they think of tobacco, rum, heat. Uh, it is that, but there's a lot more to it. It's uh, full of Spanish colonial architecture. Uh, and here's an example on the, on the right. A vibrant music and art scene, like you wouldn't imagine how full of vibrant music and uh, the clubs all over the country. Uh, that's one of the main things about not only Havana, but all of Cuba. Legendary nightlife. It's got amazing natural beauty. And the people are very warm and very friendly. They do like Americans. They have, uh, even though there's a political situation, uh, acrimonious situation between the United States and Cuba, Cuban people are extremely friendly and they love tourists. Here are some examples of uh, the architecture that I talked about in the upper right hand. You see uh, one of the main Havana avenues. This is Prado Avenue. Look at the buildings. Look at the pastel colors. Uh, these are buildings that were built in the uh, late 1800s, uh, which was one of uh, Cuba's golden periods. Here is where the uh, well-to-do families of town lived. And right below that, you have the Cathedral of Havana, which is, um, it was completed in 1777 and is in the typical Spanish Baroque style. To the right, you see a, a very strange architecture for a tropical country. This is a Moorish design and it's in the city of Cienfuegos, which is in central Cuba. And this is just to give you an idea of the eclectic styles of architecture that you can see in Cuba. Here is on the left, you see the inside of the Capitol building in Havana. This, this building was built in the uh, late uh, 1920s in the Art Deco style. And it, I love this hallway. It's, it's just an amazing place. And this is where they uh, received uh, President Obama when he visited Cuba, I believe that was in uh, 2015. Uh, on the right, you see Cienfuegos, uh, the city of Cienfuegos, which is famous for its architecture. And this is just another example of the architecture that they have. Natural beauty. This is the Valley of Viñales. And it's one of the, perhaps the most beautiful place I've ever seen. And uh, I love the countryside, the Cuban countryside. And this also happens to be where my family is from. A little town called San Cristobal, which is right around that area. And we'll be 
learning a lot more about uh, the value of Vinales as the presentation progresses. Little known facts about Cuba. Again, not just rum and cigars. It's got nine UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It's got an abundance of biosphere reserves, of national parks, um, hundreds of protected areas where you cannot build. Uh, it's got almost 4,000 miles of coastline. So if you stretch out Cuba from north to south, it would go from the middle of the Caribbean all the way to northern Canada. So that's a lot of coastline there. Plus, they have uh, 1,500 native species of fauna, uh, frogs, birds, amphibians, uh, mammals. And here are some examples. Uh, in the upper left, you see one of the most beautiful beaches in the world, that's Varadero. And that entire northern uh, stretch of, uh, of Cuba is, has some fantastic beaches, and Varadero is just one example. Underneath that, in one of the keys, this is Coco Key, Cayo Coco, you see the rock lizard, which is the second largest lizard in the world after the Komodo dragons. In the upper right, you see Santiago, which is the province all the way to the, uh, to the east, the easternmost province. And this place is famous for many things, but um, uh, primarily for the palm trees. There are waves and waves, carpets of palm trees uh, in, in areas of Santiago, which just makes for a beautiful sight. And underneath that Cienfuego is uh, a, a typical sunset, not just in Cienfuegos, but Cuba has some fantastic sunsets. In the middle, you see that uh, is a bird that is the smallest bird on earth. It is native to Cuba, and this is the Cuban Sum Sum. And the name, they named it Sum Sum because of the sound that it makes with its wings. So who can visit Cuba? This is perhaps the number one misconception about the country. Americans think they can't visit Cuba, American citizens. In fact, they can. Anybody can visit Cuba post-COVID, not right now. Uh, but requirements are different for US citizens. And uh, uh, there are some details that you have to pay attention to before you get ready to go. Uh, Americans can travel under 12, one of 12 different government approved categories. These are requirements from the United States side. The Cubans don't care if Americans go. They're happy to see you. They love you. They love the tourists. They love the, the, the US dollars uh, or euros or, or whatever it is you're going to bring. But uh, the, United, the issue is with the, on the United States side. And, and some of the categories under which US citizens can travel include uh, clergy, journalists, uh, researchers, uh, family visits, um, a couple of others, but the one that most U.S. citizens check off is support for the Cuban people. And we're going to see what support for the Cuban people means. Now, where do you sign up for this? When you buy your ticket from your local airline that flies to Cuba, they will uh, give you online a, uh, a sheet that will ask you, why are you going to Cuba? And all you do is check off support for the Cuban people. I am going to Cuba under the requirement of support for the Cuban people. Also, Americans are required not to spend any money in Cuban government entities, such as high-end hotels. Remember, this is a communist country. And many of most of the hotels are owned by the government, the high-end tourist hotels, or they are joint ventures with other companies, with other countries but Americans cannot spend their money there. They can spend it other places, uh, uh, other accommodations, which we'll get into in a minute. Fortunately, these requirements are not difficult to achieve. Uh, you are also required to engage in cultural activities with the Cuban people in the private sector. So that could be attending, a, um, uh, working with a tour guide that's showing you around Old Havana. That's, that tour guide has, that's his business. That's a private enterprise. So you hire this person to take you around for a couple of hours, you've complied with the requirement. Or if you take a salsa lesson or a cooking lesson or talk to artists, uh, in many of the art galleries uh, about how, how, uh, how they create their art. All of that counts towards support for the Cuban people. 
Americans are required to bring enough cash with them for their entire trip because your credit cards based on uh, drawn on US banks will not work. There is no connection between US banks and Cuban banks. So your credit cards are not going to work and your ATMs are not going to deliver uh, US dollars. So you got to bring enough uh, funds for the entire trip. And also American citizens are required to obtain a visa, quote unquote, it's really just a piece of paper. You also get that from your airline and the cost is 50 to $75, depending on the airline. So yes, you can go to Cuba. Everyone can go to Cuba. What is the ideal itinerary for Cuba? If you've only got a couple of days, your best bet is to start in Havana. You could spend a lifetime in Havana, but limited time, stay in Havana, do your long weekend, uh, three, four days. And believe me, there's plenty to do. Uh, if you've got maybe a couple more days, then head on to Viñales. That's the place where we saw in the beginning of the presentation, that beautiful uh, scenery. And this is where the tobacco growing uh, section, uh, tobacco growing area of the country. Uh, it's a fascinating place to visit. So but you've got four, five, six days. These two cities are your best bet. If you've got seven, nine days, then head on to Cienfuegos and Trinidad. If you've got even a little bit more than that, then you can cover the interior of the eastern part of the country, especially on the northern part where they have the most fantastic beaches. And lastly, if you've got a good two and a half, three weeks, make sure to touch the cultural powerhouse of Santiago de Cuba, which is the second most important city in Cuba and uh, second most populous also, and it is considered, uh, referred to as the Pearl of the Caribbean. Havana, a little bit about Havana. This is us uh, clowning at a club. I do tours to Cuba as well, and this is a tour I took down there, and we took this photograph in front of the a fantastic club. The name of it is the Fabrica de Arte Cubana, or the Cuban Art Factory. And what's interesting about this place is that they have taken an old uh, cooking oil factory and converted it into a massive art venue. So inside this one location, they've got music, they've got jazz clubs, theater, cinema, uh, ballet, uh, dance performances, restaurants, snack bars, uh, disco, art exhibits. It's, uh, it's a fascinating place and all in one location. So you can spend, I mean, you get there at eight, you leave there at four o'clock in the morning and you haven't even scratched the surface. So it's one of my favorite places in Havana and it's a must see when you go. So definitely the nightlife and the art scene is big. Now you can explore colonial streets and plazas like old Havana, the city itself, which is the ancient core, which used to be surrounded by the wall, uh, the retaining wall. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The entire city is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, not, not just a building, not just a museum. Um, it's the entire city. So it's fascinating to walk around. It's a great walkable city. Many museums, you don't think of, let's go to Havana to the museums, but Havana has uh, almost a hundred museums and everything from fine arts, world-class fine arts museums. I highly recommend the Cuban wing of the National Museum of Fine Arts to obscure, weird, little off-the-wall museums like the Rum Museum or the Chocolate Museum. Um, Havana has a very interesting rooftop culture. It's a very hot city. There are few places that have, not every place has air conditioning. So a life is led on, on the rooftops. So there's where you'll have many restaurants, um, swimming pools, uh, clubs, so head to the Havana rooftops. Uh, it's an interesting place, it's fun, and also the views are fantastic. 
uh, Eastern beaches, um, although for Americans, you can't just go and hang out on a beach uh, on a vacation. I mean, tourism itself, pure tourism in its purest form is not allowed, but you can go and spend a couple of hours on the beach and it's just about 20 minutes away from Havana, beautiful beaches, and it's very cheap to go to. There's a bus that goes from central Havana all the way to the beaches. Local experiences that comply with the U.S. government regulations of support for the Cuban people, meet the artists, cooking lessons, any kind of class. Um, and the Cubans know that. They know that Americans uh, are looking to have those experiences. So it will be very easy to, to locate these. And also you can look them up online before you go. Viñales, that's that town that I mentioned. If you've got a couple of extra days, uh, go to the countryside. Uh, here you can meet with tobacco farmers, also it classifies as support for the Cuban people. Anything that supports private enterprise. Um, you can experience that beautiful valley by horseback riding or bike rides, or it has some fantastic hikes, which is why some people try to do Viñales in one day from Havana, but I strongly recommend that you at least spend the night there. And you're exploring a typical Cuban country town. It's, it's, it's an interesting experience and gets you out of the city. Also, one of the most interesting activities in Viñales is to cruise an underground river. Uh, that entire area is on a network, an underground network of caves, and rivers run through these caves. So you can actually navigate the rivers on a boat. Uh, a lot of fun. And it's, they're very eco tourism uh, conscious. Uh, so you can have fantastic meals that are farm to table. You see them actually pulling the, the picking the, the fruit from the trees and then giving it to you. And with that view, can you imagine? Trinidad is the most perfectly preserved colonial city in the Caribbean, also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, there's an underground nightclub there, which is one of my favorite places in the city. And you can also learn about Santeria, which is an Afro-Cuban religion from a priestess that has a business there. You visit this woman, she tells you about the, the uh, Santeria religion. Um, she'll demonstrate the different rituals, and that also counts as um, support for the Cuban people. And some great hikes in the area. Cienfuegos is a city that is in central Cuba, and it was founded by French settlers from uh, Bordeaux and Louisiana. And you can see that in the architecture of the city and also in the names of the people. They all have these French last names, which you don't generally think of Cubans as having French last names, but these are the descendants of, of the, uh, the French settlers. So there, this is a, um, a cemetery called La Reina, and the gentleman that runs these, the cemetery or that attends the cemetery gives tours for, for tips. And he'll tell you all of the history behind these cities. And you can see this beautiful uh, funerary artistry, statuary. You can visit the colonial center of the city, which is considered the, the prettiest in Cuba, with some spectacular buildings. And uh, this, have, this is a, a city where you'll find many open air nightclubs, which are fantastic live music, um, under the, dancing under the stars. And uh, in the center of the city, they have some beautiful theaters. The TRE Theater uh, is famous for its architecture and also for the performances. They have um, uh, the, the symphony plays there, the National Ballet. And right nearby, there is a fantastic water hole with waterfalls, which is it's just great to go swimming in, in the middle of a, of a tropical river. Where do you stay in Havana? Let me make sure time-wise we're doing okay. Okay, uh, you stay in the accommodations or what they call casas particulares. A casa particular is the equivalent of an Airbnb or a homestay or a, um, uh, a bed and breakfast. Uh, these are rooms that are let out by the owners of the house. And uh, this, for example, is Teresa, Teresita. She was the hostess. And there's usually women that operate these accommodations. And, uh, 
and you're actually able to stay in, and live with a Cuban family, which is just an extraordinary experience. Talk about uh, getting exposure to the culture. Uh, we became friends, uh, Teresita and I, I ended up going to her daughter's graduation. So, I mean, your choices are, do you go to a sterile hotel or do you live in the home of, of Cubans and have that experience? I mean, for me, it was like a no brainer. Um, the, the, uh, the hostess also functions as a concierge. She will get you, um, she'll book taxis for you, uh, restaurant reservations, um, tours, she'll help you out with whatever you need. Also, ultimately, the price is right. Uh, these are very reasonably priced. The average is maybe like $40 a night, depending on there's some luxurious casas and others that are, that are not so fancy, but it's certainly within somebody's uh, budget. This is what they look like, these casas in the interior. Um, this, these are the typical living rooms. Uh, in the upper right, you will see that symbol, which looks like an upside down anchor. This is the symbol of a, where you can find a casa. So if you're walking around and you see this symbol, I mean, you can knock on the door and, and ask if they have rooms for the night. In the center here, you will see a typical breakfast. They average uh, for about $5. And you've got everything that you could imagine here. The, the fresh fruit, tomatoes, fried plantains. Cuban breakfasts at these casas are very, very good. What to eat? Uh, typical Cuban dishes are all the proteins, uh, the fish, chicken, uh, pork is very big. Uh, ropa vieja is like the national dish. It's shredded beef cooked in a tomato sauce. The sides are black beans, fried plantains, uh, cassava roots. Cubans have a sweet tooth, so you can expect a lot of pastries, custards. Tropical foods are big, tropical country. Um, they're delicious and they're very fresh. And of course, there's like every imaginable variation of rum. They put rum in anything. And it's, it, it, here's when you think about Cuban, you think about rum. Here's when you're justified in thinking about rum. Um, best places to eat are in Paladares. A Paladar is a Cuban owned restaurant, uh, similar to the Casas, which are Cuban owned accommodations. These are Cuban owned restaurants. And um, they, eating there, you are supporting the Cuban people because you're supporting free enterprise. So that also count, counts as support for the Cuban people. So see how easy it is to actually comply with that regulation. Um, and the food tends to be much better also. And recommended paladares, these are three that are on the top of my list. El, uh, La Guarida, El Cocinero, and San Cristobal. San Cristobal is where President Obama ate when he visited Cuba. And if you're looking for a place to eat in Cuba, there is a bilingual restaurant app called alamesa.com. Money matters. Here's where it gets a, might get a little bit tricky. Um, Cuba has two currencies. Uh, one is the national uh, currency, which is the peso, which is used by most Cubans. And then there is the CUC, the C-U-C, which is one CUC is approximately $1. And that's used by tourists. You also, hard currency is also readily accepted anywhere. Again, US citizens bring your own cash. Remember that there are, uh, you're not gonna get um, uh, funds easily in Cuba. So you have to bring them with you. Oh, one point, uh, one of your biggest expenses is going to be the, um, your, your accommodations, your casas. You can pay for those in the United States. So uh, that way you don't have to be walking around with tons of money, tons of cash on you. And you can exchange your currency easily at places called cadecas. How to get around. The classic American cars you see on your upper left. Uh, you also have carriages, uh, horse-drawn carriages, which are kind of nice and, and romantic. And to drive around one of these uh, in old Havana is, is an experience. In the upper right, you see these taxis. The yellow one is the official government taxis. You know, you try to avoid them. They're more, more expensive, although they're clean and air-conditioned. Um, the, and the average price of these would be about $10, which by Western standards is not expensive, but Cuban standards, it's, it's an outrageous price. Next to that is a cocoa taxi, which is a two-seater and it's in the shape of a coconut, which is why they call it a cocoa taxi. And uh, the last 
uh, transportation on the totem pole is the BC taxi, which is a bicycle that has been converted into a type of um, tuk-tuk, only not motorized. And uh, this, this is very, very cheap, and you use it to, to drive around the, uh, the old Havana. Daily expenses. Uh, on the low end, you can stay at a hostel for 11 kook. When I say kook, I mean the equivalent of a dollar, so I'm just going to use dollar. Meals, you can eat very cheaply, uh, 10 kook, $10. Uh, transportation, uh, five, if you can take the collective taxis. These are shared taxis that will go north, south, and east to west on the big avenues. If you learn the... Um, if you learn the uh, the traffic, you can pay virtually nothing. It's extremely cheap. And any kind of miscellaneous uh, uh, museum entrance, a uh, couple of beers, some souvenirs. On the medium end, which is where most people will go, uh, a good casa will cost you $40 a night, meals another 40 transportation 30 um, some souvenirs. Are about 130, but that might even be a little bit on the high end. Um, now, for the high ends, for people that are going to go to the expensive um, hotels, the high end hotels, that can run you 400 a night. Meals at the top paladares or even in the hotel will run you about 150. Transportation, you can rent a classic American car convertible to take you around the city from like 130 to $150 a day. And for miscellaneous on the high end, I put question marks because uh, Cuba has a very uh, vibrant art scene and many of the artists there are world renowned. You can buy original Cuban art for thousands of dollars. And uh, there are some clubs that are also very expensive. The Tropicana, which is legendary, it's been around since the twenties. It's an open air Vegas style um, uh, performance. That uh, cost you about a hundred bucks. So you, you can spend as much money as you want in Cuba as well. Oh, by the way, if you want to see details uh, on Cuban uh, expenses, daily expenses, go to Nomadic Mat, uh, visit Cuba on a budget. I wrote an article there for, for Matt and uh, it's more comprehensive. What to pack for Cuba? Obviously comfortable walking shoes. It's very hot very informal, so dress down. As a result of the embargo that's been around for like 60 years, so the United States embargo against Cuba, they don't have a lot of consumer products, so bring your own. You can locate sunscreen, but it's going to take you, you're going to spend your time looking for this because there's no drugstores the way we know them. Um, so bring your own, uh, very important sunscreen, feminine care products, any kind of, make yourself a little uh, medicine, uh, a, little, uh, a little kit of aspirin, Tylenol, Band-Aids, things like that. Uh, tissues, many places don't have toilet paper, so that's important as well. Uh, you can bring donations, leave them at the local church. Uh, I work with a, uh, a woman's cooperative in Havana that uh, they do graphic arts and I bring donations. Um, things that are always welcome are plastic food storage containers. They love that. Is it safe? Yes. Uh, but just like anywhere else, there's uh, silly, petty crime. Just, just use your own common sense. Just say no gracias to any persistent tout. Can't you change carefully? So make sure that when you give the cook that you don't get back local currency. Uh, bottled water, we make sure to refill your plastic uh, bottles of water at your casa. Uh, make sure that you watch where you walk and consider booking whatever you need with your hostess. She's going to take good care of you. She wants you to be happy. And if you want to know more, you can contact me. Here are all of my contact informations. And this is uh, a picture that I took in, uh, how, how are we doing on time? Uh, we're okay. Uh, I took this picture outside of a church in Cienfuegos and these kids were just fooling around. They were just playing and, and they started uh, telling me, oh, take our picture, take our picture. So I did. I said, hey, you know, gather. And they did. And they gathered like, like little flowers. 
it was just beautiful to watch. And, uh, and this is my favorite picture and I call it the colors of Cuba. Um, last, I'd um, like to tell you about my books. Uh, Don't Just Travel to Cuba, Experience Cuba. It's available on Amazon. And um, 110 Best Travel Tips, that's my second book. That's also available on Amazon, but I would like to give that to you for free if you go uh, to my website, uh, Travels with Talik, and uh, just uh, sign up and you'll receive this ebook immediately. And that is all that I have for now. And I want to say thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Talek. That was chocked full of Too information. No, much information. not at all. Not at all. You could go on for hours. <laughs> but you can leave this up just for another minute so that people can, um, you know, write down the names of your books and whatnot. Uh, Erica just dropped in Talek's website in the chat, everyone. <laughs> Um, sorry, I think I have some allergies, so excuse me. But we have a ton of wonderful questions that I'd love to go through with you. Sure. So, Erica stacked her questions for back to back. <laughs> so, she wants to know how big are the rock lizards? Uh, yeah, let's start with that one because everything else you kind of covered. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. The ones that I saw, I've saw them. I don't know if those are the biggest ones. Um, I mean, we could look it up, but I, the one that I remember seeing was about two feet, but it could have been a baby. So uh, the baby. average size, yeah, the average size of a rock lizard. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know she also asked, can you pay for accommodation online before you go so you don't have to carry so much cash? Absolutely. And a few, perfect. A few people had asked that. Um, I'm just going to go expand on that because a few other people asked as well. Uh, you can book oh, through yes. Airbnb, right? Yeah, you can book through Airbnb. That's the one that I use. But you, they're also, uh, they have several other ones. Uh, another one is uh, Mi Casa en Cuba or, or Tu Casa en Cuba, Your House in Cuba. Uh, Casa Cuba is another one. They're, they're easily accessible. Just go online and say, hey, Casas. Everybody calls them casas. Everybody knows what they mean. Casas in Cuba. And they've got pictures. It's just like an Airbnb site. Uh, you can communicate with the hostess. You see pictures of what it looks like. Uh, you pay. Uh, and, uh, and then you're all set. You're all set. Now, I have not used the payment of these other ones that I've mentioned. Um, but I have used the one for Airbnb. And there's absolutely no issue. OK, great to know. No, that was a common question before because people had concerns about carrying so much cash with them. Do you just want to elaborate on that? I know a few people are worried that it makes them a target. Well, there are, uh, first do that, um, get your accommodations. Uh, that's going to be the bulk of, of your expenditure. Um, do that online before you go. Um, that'll take care of maybe 60%. And there are uh, safes in the, uh, in the casas themselves. So you can put your money in there and it's perfectly safe. But it's all, um, it's all uh, uh, the, the rotary ones, not, not, not with a key. I, I forget the name of that. <laughs> but it's, it's perfectly safe. And uh, what I also do is just carry a money belt Mm -hmm. And make sure that they're available on Amazon easily. They're, they're very cheap, like $14. But make sure that you get a money belt that is waterproof because you will sweat. And if it's just uh, material, it's, it's going to sweat through the, through the bills. So you don't want that. But right. yeah, there, there's no, that, that is a pain in the neck. Um, keep in mind, though, that although this has been the situation with Cuba for a while, every time we have a new administration it changes so you have to, to when you're getting ready to go down there just make sure that you see what's the most recent uh, regulations because Obama made it very easy for people to go and now with Trump it, it's less it's a little bit more difficult so who knows what the, when the, when uh, the new administration is going to to make changes there as well so you just have to pay attention to that 
But yeah, traveling around with a little bit more money than you would want to is, is a pain in the neck. I realize that. It's worth it. Absolutely worth it, though. Yes, absolutely worth it. Um, and I think with any country, just go and check out what the news is a few days before, right? Do some Googling. Um, another tip I learned when you're kind of taking out money, kind of spread it all over yourself, right? And Good your point. money belt. But also... If you're trying to pay someone, don't take out your hundreds of dollars right in front of their face in the middle of the street. Kind of like do it discreetly or before you get to a place. I don't know. Maybe I'm overly cautious, but no, I try exactly to make it right. a little discreet. Yeah. So it just, and I do that anywhere. Like even back here in LA, I'll be like, all right, kind of hide everything. But um, okay. So Krista would like to know suggestions for taking USD versus euros or Canadian dollars or something else due to adding exchange rates for USD? Well, that, that's a very, very good question. And I, and I think I know why they're asking that. Up until about a month ago or six weeks ago, there was a law in Cuba, this, this one was the Cubans, not the Americans, that when you exchanged US dollars, there was a 10% penalty fee, which is considerable. So there's the 3% regular exchange rate, but on top of that, there was a 10% uh, fee. So a lot of people, depending on how much money you, you want to take, would bring, bring down uh, um, euros, exchange the euros into, uh, they would first of all bring down euros. If they had dollars, they'd turn them into euros, bring their euros down to Cuba, exchange that for the kook even with the extra exchange fee, it was still cheaper in comparison when you take into consideration the, uh, the 10%. However, they have eliminated that entirely now. So bring down, forget about the euros now, unless you're coming from Europe. If you're coming with, you're working with dollars, just take dollars. That, that fee is gone. So don't let, not that anybody's going to try and rip you off and tell you, oh yeah, the fee is still in existence. It is not. That, that has gone. That's good to know. That's good to know. Um, and Tala, you can, uh, you can pause your screen share, stop your screen share now if, you, if you'd like. And Catalina has the next question. Interesting one. Can one open a bank account if you're staying for like a month and just withdraw from local banks as you travel through the country? There have been some changes and I don't know if U.S. citizens can do it. I don't think so. But I know that there have been some changes and they're allowing uh, Cuban Americans to do so because the Cuban Americans have two passports. You're always Cuban. Even if you've turned into an American, you've naturalized. Once, once you're Cuban and once you have a Cuban passport, you're all, by, by, uh, Cuba considers you always Cuban. So you can open a bank account. As far as Americans, I sincerely doubt it, but there have been some changes. Right, right. Yep, good to know. Um, now, one yeah, thing just... you could do is you can have money sent down to you by Western Union, but it can only be received by a Cuban national. Oh, okay. So make friends. Well, make friends yeah. anyway, but... <laughs> yeah, make friends anyway. But, you know, if you really were going to spend a lot of time there, you can probably do this with... Oh, my God, that's hard to, to, to recommend. I mean, you, you don't know. Uh, but right. chances are your hostess would be your best bet for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And who knows what kind of proof of identification you need? to open the bank account. Like if you need your birth certificate and your, you know, whatever other things, but that it might be more oh, trouble. They're, they're worth, very so. big on passports. Uh, one thing that I, I forgot to mention is uh, you, if you're going to exchange money, you need pa your passport. So many times I've like, oh, wow, I got, I got to go exchange money. I go down to the local cadeca. They ask me for my passport. Like, because who walks around with a passport to exchange money? Right. You know, but that's happened to me a couple of times. So I would imagine that in order to open up a bank account, a, a Cuban American, that, that you would need all sorts of documentation. It's, they're very big on, on, they're very big on control. It's a communist country. Right. Right. I wonder, um, sometimes I travel, I travel with a photo of my passport also, and I always try that first because I hate bringing my passport out in public. I, I don't do it. I've been rejected from clubs because I refuse to do it. And then friends have to like step up to the plate, but try a photo of your passport or your identification first, and then kind of back that up with like a driver's license or an ID. 
And if they won't accept those two forms of ID, then yeah, go get your passport. But those are also some hot tips I usually use while I'm traveling. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, so Gregory and myself had questions about accommodation. Are there American chain hotels in Cuba or any chain hotels uh, yes. from any nationality? And hostel, are hostels a reliable option and do they exist? Yes, hostels exist. Uh, they're quite nice. There are some places that call themselves hostels. I don't know why, but they're actually casas. But, you know, okay, you want to call yourself a hostel, that's fine. The price is right. And yes, they exist and they're, they're very nice. Um, there are ho there are no American hotel chains. America and the United uh, the United States and Cuba have no have no typical uh, government relations, diplomatic relations that we are, that like the ones we are accustomed to to knowing about. Um, we just recently, as a matter of fact, just with Obama, that we just exchanged um, uh, embassies. Up until then, we didn't have any. Uh, Fifty years without any kind of uh, embassies on either end. So um, there's no change hotels. There is uh, European change hotels. There is the Melia, which is a Spanish chain. Uh, Cuba was a Spanish colony and they got their independence from Spain in, in the late, uh, eight, 19, late 1800s. So there's still a lot of Spanish uh, relationships. So yeah, they have uh, chains uh, and it's a fantastic chain. It's absolutely gorgeous, the Melia chain. The Packard also is, is a Spanish chain. The Ibero Star, which is all over the world, they're very beautiful and, and uh, yeah, they're there. These are very nice hotels. Uh, some of them are very expensive. Like we talked about the, the Packard there was it's $400 a night. Uh, there's one hotel that is beautiful. It's, it's the Nacional, which is considered the grand dame of, of hotels, of Havana hotels. This is, uh, it's been around forever, and in the 50s, it was a very popular place where American movie stars went. So Ava Gardner, Frank Sinatra, um, all the, um, the, uh, the gangsters, uh, there was a lot of money in that, uh, in that hotel. And uh, you can still see the history there. It's worth going just to see it. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of high-end hotels that you could stay at. Now, um, when I say the Americans, the United States doesn't, doesn't allow you to do this, that, or the other thing, you're pretty much on the honor system. Cubans don't care where you stay, or what hold, where you eat, where you sleep, they, they could care less. And America, the United States doesn't have spies walking around behind you, making sure that you don't go to this place and, you know, alarms are not going to go off if you walk into a hotel. It's pretty much the honor system, but that is the regulation for now, for today. Yep. Yep. Um, Talek, do you have a few minutes to be able to go over? I know we're coming up on nine minutes no, left I'm here. I'm fine. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect, perfect. So I want to piggyback off your last comment. Philip wanted to know, do you, you know, as far as like no one's following you around, checking where you're staying, where you're eating. Philip wanted to know, do you have to prove your interactions with the local people and how and like, why can you only go to the beach for a few hours? Is someone checking okay. that? <laughs> no, no one's checking. Again, it's on your honor system. You are required to keep a record of what you did. You spoke to you know, Juan in, uh, at uh, such and such a, an artist warehouse um, workshop, or you took a dancing lesson with Maria's dance class, or you took a tour of Old Havana, uh, with Juan's tours, just right, you slept at such and such a place, you ate at such and such a place. You're supposed to keep a record of that. Again, nobody has ever asked for proof of this but that is the regulation and you're you're supposedly legally you're required to hold on to this for five years so so what you're saying is now cuba is a good time to start a travel journal or diary if you don't have one right <laughs> put all oh, your yeah. ticket stubs and write everywhere you went you've gone yeah, yeah definitely <laughs> that's right. okay. absolutely true interesting i wonder if pictures would ever suffice if someone actually got asked. Well, they, the requirement is keep a record of okay. what you did and where you went and keep it for five years. 
nobody will ever nobody five ever years yeah for five years wow yeah. <laughs> now as far as the beach because tourism pure tourism the way we understand it is illegal you cannot go down there mm -hmm. to just hang out on a beach for for five days if you're an american citizen now you can go to some of these uh high-end resorts and they're just loaded with germans italians canadians are big and, and they're all hanging out on the beach for days and days and days and they have no issue um but again nobody's checking like are you canadian or are you an american wow you look like an american to me you know no no <laughs> right right <laughs> okay um crate i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly is it safe to travel by bicycle in cuba i would say so yeah i've done it i haven't traveled from one city to another but i've traveled throughout the uh throughout the, the throughout havana and the outskirts of Havana by bicycle. Yeah, some of the roads are not in great condition, but some of the roads are not in great condition elsewhere in the United States. So, um, but yeah, it's safe. It's a, it's a very safe country. There is a lot of um, tourism is, I don't wanna say, I think it might just be the uh, biggest revenue generator in the country. And they know that, and they know that if there's anything, uh, any issues with tourism not being safe, that they're, they're going to have a hard time. And they want to make sure that they maintain that revenue generator humming nicely. So you do see um, police in the, uh, in the tourism areas, um, in the clubs. They're visible. You know, you'll see them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very, very safe very safe it, this is not this is not a dangerous country i mean you think of cuba i think of cuba and i don't think of, of it as being dangerous at all on the contrary and people are very helpful you, you ask for directions but again as i mentioned there's this there's, there's some petty nonsense there's somebody's going to try and sell you cigars and they're genuine they're, they're going to probably be fake so you know, buy cigars at, at, the, at, the, uh, uh, at, the, at the source, like the tobacco farms and things like that. So the exchange, you know, giving you the wrong change type of thing, taking advantage of the dual currencies. But that's it. That's really it. There's, there's a lot of respect for, for tourists and they're, yes. they're protected. I bet. Oh, so lovely to hear. I know everyone in this chat is like, I want to go now. <laughs> I think only two of our audience to a few of our audience has been today. So it's, uh, it's a new country that we're learning about from, um, from you. So Brian wants to know how easy is it for vegetarians and vegans to eat in Cuba, especially with a homestay? It's easy. It's, uh, they, there's a lot of them. I get a lot of, I get this question a lot. Like every day there's more and more vegetarians. You'd be surprised. There are, um, Cuba, as a result of, of the economic situation and the political situation and the embargo, um, a lot of places they don't have meat. So they have become vegetarians in many cases, and it's just necessity. And they know that the, uh, a lot of tourists are vegetarians and they, they are able to make sure that they can uh, supply that for the tourists. Absolutely. Plus, it's part of our natural culture anyway it's not so strange for, to us to to eat a lot of vegetables a lot of fruits and vegetables and, and rice rice and beans are big that's a that's a classic part of the culture um tubers uh, all sorts of uh, cassava type uh, uh starch starchy vegetables fresh vegetables salads we're big on salads it's, it's not going to be an issue at all Lovely. I could do an all fruit diet. I'm down for that. All tropical fruit diet. <laughs> okay, so um, we had another, oh, sorry, I deleted who this was from, but the meal expenses in the expense chart that you had, is that for all meals throughout the day combined or is it per meal? So for example, no, that's the all low meals throughout the day combined. So oh, if it's $40, okay. it's going to be your $5 that I recommend that you do your breakfast in your casa. Um, that's going to be $5. And then maybe you'll do a sandwich and a beer someplace for lunch and maybe, or you'll have your, your big heavy meal for lunch. And then you'll go to a nice paladar 
in the evening and it's going to cost you uh, 15 15 dollars thereabouts don't order the lobster there's there's a lot of people that are over over farming lobsters and it's very sad and people tourists want to go there to eat the lobsters because lobsters are good but they are over farming it so it's, is lobster like a known a known dish in in Cuba? Yes. yes okay. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't worry, guys. I got COVID tested. I don't have it. I'm just allergies. <laughs> um, okay. So Jennifer would like to know what do you suggest as a gift for her host? And as far as tipping, or oh, what's the tipping culture? Oh like? my God. Uh, that's easy. Plastic food containers. You will go down in history as the most beloved tourist that uh, a traveler that that ever lived if you bring just go to the supermarket get a bunch of ziploc those containers bring that soaps little soaps or big soaps 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 are very very big pencils are big pens are big uh what else did i say that aspirin clothing um used clothing gently used clothing or maybe not even so gently used i mean clothing is very big um but definitely uh soaps and plastic containers plastic That's a great containers tip. yeah plastic food containers so do you mean like like a rubber like a tupperware like rubbermaid yes. tupperware Correct. Yes. oh interesting yes. now rubbermaid tupperware is those that's high end but you can yeah. also get those that's high end for me <laughs> At home. <laughs> those, regular, those regular zip lock ones you know that they're like okay. plastic you can get those but yeah if you really want to go big the definitely the tupperware that's going to be loved i'm going to write that into my cuba budget tipping okay. rubbermaid tupperware <laughs> okay uh so erica wants to know what is the name of the women's cooperative that you work with oh boy we just i don't have that in front of me i can um how can i get this information to you i have it i just don't have it on me or, uh, i think how can i able do to that? send a follow-up or email connect okay. with um, erica afterwards erica and myself and we'll make sure that you can get that information out because i'm sure there's plenty of people that would love to know um more about it and how they can help as well okay Great. i also worked with a a very nice uh, senior citizen center um, which was a lot of fun actually you went there and they, they'd sing for you and they were just so happy that you were spending some time with them and there was a couple there that had just gotten married and they were like in their 80s and that was that was a lot of fun that's so sweet yes we if, if you've worked with them if there's um, yeah. we'd love to know about that I, as I well. get you both I get you both thank right. you thank you <laughs> okay so Brian has an important question how welcoming or not is Cuba to LGBTQ plus travelers, especially if traveling as a same sex couple? That, that's a good question. The, is it his daughter, the sister or, or the daughter, I don't remember, of the president of Cuba is, uh, is a great advocate of, uh, of LGBTQ people. And um, they are, they are uh, was pretty much respected and it's not something that, it's not dangerous. You won't be made to feel uncomfortable. Um, and there's a lot of clubs that are, that are exclusively for, for that community. So um, yeah, that's, that's not a problem. This is not a Muslim country. It's not looked at weirdly. Um, it's very much supported by the by the government it's actually supported by the government but particularly for this woman that is her name is mariela castro and uh she she was very very supportive and she's pushed through a lot of laws she's done a lot for the community that is so wonderful to know that's great so sharon would like to know what is the best airline and sharon is in houston so anything may work Wow. Well, I know that you should leave out of Miami. Um, that's well, actually they've got direct flights out of a lot of cities now. Um, probably Houston is one of them. I don't know. I usually fly out of Miami or New York, uh, but you can go American airlines goes, uh, uh, JetBlue goes, uh, Delta goes. And, 
some of these are, are have been direct flights from New York, and I know that they have direct flights from other places as well. But if there is a, a, a flight change, that's probably going to be in Miami. Um, yeah, and all of those, there's plenty of airlines. It's, it's, so you're not going to have a problem with that. Okay, all right. And yeah, JetBlue has the cheapest uh, visa. That's $50. The most expensive one is American Airlines. That's uh, $75 plus a $25 service fee. So that's a hundred bucks. I mean, that's a big difference. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. double the price. I had no idea that the, uh, the visa is dependent on the airline. That's, um, I've never really heard that with any other country. Yeah, that, that's why they, it's not really a visa. That's why I say visa, ah. you know, but because a lot of people call it that. So, and the name kind of like stuck. It's a, it's a tourist card is what it is. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just a little piece of paper is where you're coming from, where you're going, where are you staying, and that's it. Okay, all right. So think of JetBlue first when flying to Cuba. <laughs> yeah. So Aquiles would like to know, how is it for family travels, and what do you recommend for family with preteens? Wow, that um, if you're going for that, that same itinerary that I suggested, uh, spend some time in, uh, in Havana, three days in Havana, um, and uh, maybe two days in Viñales, if you've got a little bit more, go to Trinidad and, uh, and Cienfuegos. Um, kids, let me see, um, there's, there's the beach. I mean, you can go to the beach. Um, some very interesting fortresses. Uh, Cuba is surrounded by some of the most perfect examples of Spanish military fortresses. Uh, the kids like that. They like to wander around the moats and go down to the dungeons and that sort of thing. There's a lot of nice parks um, uh, with playgrounds, depending on how old the kids are. Um, uh, the restaurants are, are kid friendly. Um, there's a place called Fusterlandia, which is very nice. Um, which is an artist community that uh, is kind of like a big cartoon. The whole thing is like a big cartoon. Um, it's hard to explain, <laughs> uh, but kids would be very interested in that. Uh, there's a, a lot of stuff to the, the souvenir places, a, a lot of stuff for kids. Um, some of the nice museums, um, uh, the Natural History Museum is very interesting. Oh, there, there's plenty for kids to do. Awesome. And everyone, if you don't know, I think there are some people in the chat who have been to Cuba with kids and preteens. Three little dots in the bottom right hand corner. You can save the chat down to go through it and read up on all the tips that people have um, contributed to the chat. So little uh -huh. hot tip there. Yeah, yeah. I usually do it because I'm unemployed. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, Alicia would like to know if you want to ride in a classic car, do you have to hire a driver or can you drive yourself? No, they're not going to let you. Uh, there are, these are vehicles that are passed down from generation to generation. I mean, you can probably sit in the, in the, in the, maybe they will let you. Uh, I, I doubt it because it's just so, such a, a valuable family heirloom. Um, you can sit and take pictures pretending that you're driving. Uh, where you can uh, get these cars is out, out right out in Central Park, which is the center of Havana. It, you can't miss it. I mean, that's, that's like saying Times Square in New York. Um, they have a line of cars there, and you'll just go up to somebody and negotiate a, a fare with them, and they'll drive you around the city. Um, fares can go for about $40 an hour. Um, and they take you all around, uh, uh, especially the, uh, the avenue called the Malecon, which is the, the seawall, which is a very beautiful part of the city. And you can probably get a better deal if you go for two hours or three hours. The more time you do, the, the more competitive the price gets. Um, but yeah, and there's a lot of them there. So you can, you know, ask this guy, get a price, go to the next guy, get a price. That's another thing. Everything in Cuba is, is pretty much negotiable, especially with transportation. Cool. Cool. Okay. We have a question. I have about five more questions, Eric. Are sure. we okay? Probably like eight more minutes. Okay. From Leah, another Leah, is there a time limit for Americans to spend in Cuba? 
Yeah, I think you get, if, if you spend beyond 90 days, you have to register with the government or something. Uh, but yeah, 90 days. Do you know if there's a fee that you have to pay if you no, overstay that? I do not. Okay. All right. All right. So Susan has a question. Why are cruise ships not allowed to dock in Cuba anymore? I did see that last yeah. year that that rule was altered, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, it was uh, for 60 years you couldn't go and then all of a sudden they did open it under Obama and uh, I think it was for a couple of years they were doing the cruises and then all of a sudden they stopped and they stopped because of the political situation, the acrimonious political situation between the United States and, and Cuba. So oh. that was... Bummer. Okay. Um, Achilles has another question. What if you have a dual citizenship? What would you recommend using if you're traveling from the U.S. to Cuba? I would recommend traveling on your uh, your your uh, uh, Spanish uh, your European passport. If you, depending on what it is, a, a Canadian. I would travel with anything other than the U.S. passport. Although it's not the big, it's not a big deal. It's so easy to go, even with a U.S. passport. But why would you, you know, add this extra layer of, oh my God, do I take the dancing lesson now? Or, oh, I, I got to go get the dancing lesson. <laughs> you know, you don't want to do that. So, yeah, right. if you have a choice, by all means, travel with your Brazilian passport, your EU passport, your Canadian passport. Yep. I kind of think that makes sense, too. It seems like you may get a little less trouble, but because you'd have to try it out and see. So last two questions here. Jay would like to know if Americans are allowed to do business with, with Cuban businesses now. There is a Cuban. slew of, of, uh, of regulations on that. And I'm not an expert, so your best bet is to contact uh, the State Department of the United States and ask, the, ask them, the Cuba section. But if I have to guess, I would say no. It's not because we don't have any relations with these people. Although there are some exceptions. I know that the United States sells uh, food to Cuba, chickens, frozen chickens, and that sort of thing. A lot of agriculture as well. But as far as trying to do business, you know, check with the, with the State Department. Okay. Will do. And last question I'll do here. And uh, everyone else, if you have any questions we didn't answer, you can please reach out to Talek um uh di directly you can visit her website connect with her on all the social media uh platforms so michael would like to know do you need to pre-book you know all accommodations transport activities because michael personally prefers to you know make those decisions once you're in the country but or, do you suggest pre-booking as much as possible before you arrive? That's a really, really good question because I'm also one of these spontaneous people. You know, I mean, if I love Viñales and maybe I want to stay an extra night, whereas if I had already pre-booked for the next city, then I got to go, oh my God, I, was, I already paid for it. You know, I understand that. What some people do is that they will pre-book Havana um, because that's going to be their first stop. So you're going to spend three days in Havana. So pre-book that and then work with your, uh, your um, if you know you're only going to spend three days and then on the fourth day you're going to go to Vinales, then pre-book Vinales. But if you're not sure and you want to, to maybe I don't want to go to Vinales or I heard that they have fantastic uh, colonial architecture in Trinidad, I want to skip Vinales and go, go to Trinidad, then just uh, make those arrangements while you're there. You can either work with your uh, hostess, your casa hostess. They all have connections with cities across the country. So if you tell her, hey, I want to go to, to, to Trinidad, she'll make that arrangement for you. Or you can just go to Trinidad. You just show up there and you look for that sign, which I've done that a lot. Uh, oh, this house. Oh, it looks like a nice house. Oh, yeah, it's a casa. It's got the sign. So I'll just knock and hey, you got rooms for the night? Oh, yeah, sure. So that's wonderful. Yeah, especially if you have that you have to walk around with a little bit more cash on you. Yep. Ah, yes. Yep. So it's like time or carrying cash because I'd always yeah. recommend that if if you have a bit more time to spare and you want to make that decision when you get there, you know, um, yeah. It's kind of fun to be like, what should I do today? Where should I yeah. stay today? So, 
Talek, thank you so much for this wonderful informational presentation and the Q&A was so thorough. There were a few questions I wasn't able to get to, so I apologize to everyone trying to be conscious of time. You can reach out to Talek directly, like we said, and um, I think all her information will be dropped into the chat. I just wanna go over a few closing remarks before we depart. So thank you again, everyone, for being here. As you know, we do have events pretty much every Tuesday and Thursday to, this is our slate for about the next week. We have a special one tomorrow, which is uh, moving to France, Ask Me Anything with Steven. He's coming back since literally all of you want to move to France <laughs> and now Cuba. <laughs> uh, Thursday, we have Ava coming on for what it's like to teach English and live in South Korea. Erica herself has a ton of information because she did the same thing. So that's going to be really great. Also, I've heard South Korea, you could literally pay off like 20 grand in student loan just from the kind of money you make there. So it, yeah, you can like pay off buku bucks in South teaching in South Korea. Thursday night, we have a California happy hour. If you're not from California, that's okay. You could still attend. We'd love to see you. Um, Laura Cox is going to be uh, running that one and she's on the call right now. So we're excited for that. We also have how to make the most of your vacations during the age of Corona. We all want to know that right now. No one's sitting on a plane right now, unfortunately. And how to publish a children's book about travel next week as well. And go to the website at the top. You can see all our events for the next literally like month, month and a half. It's great. As we said before, um, our guest speakers come on and they do this out of the goodness of their hearts and they share their knowledge and their time with us. So the Nomadic Network, we are an exclusive community, but by joining the Patreon, you can also get the uh, TNN event replays. We'd, um, you know, this is how you're able to support us and keep us running. So if you wanna scan this with your phone, it'll open up the page for you. You can see everything you get. We have some bullet points on here that tell you that as well personal stories, um, input on the content that we create, live Q&As, free signed books, guides, never before con seen content and photos. And that is on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, if you aren't able to contribute a monthly donation, uh, a monthly you know, membership with Patreon, we do appreciate any one-time donations you're able to make. And you know, this would be nothing if it weren't for all of you. Like if it was just Talik, Erica, and myself, it's not, the best, the most fun conversations. We appreciate having you all here. You are literally who make the community. So we want to thank you all. Thank you, Talek, for your time and your knowledge. You. I hope you get lots of people reaching out to you. Everyone else will hopefully see you sometime this week or next week. Thank you again for attending Cuba. Bye, everyone. Save down the chat if you want. There's a lot of good information in there. <laughs>